How's it going today, guys? So this is a video that I am very excited about because it is so eye-opening to people who have never played with a compound interest calculator before. If you're somebody who has, you probably know where this story is going, but I want you to promise me this. If you have never played with a compound interest calculator in your life before, the very next thing I want you to do after this video, after you subscribe, if you're new to my channel, and drop a like, the very next thing I want you to do is go down in the description and click the link for that compound interest calculator. I'm gonna link it up, and I want you guys to play around with it for 10 or 20 minutes just to see the amazing capability of compound interest. In fact, Albert Einstein called this the eighth wonder of the world because of its ability to make people freaking rich, honestly. So this video, I'm going to be going over two compound interest, interest examples, as well as kind of explaining what it is. There's not a lot to it. It is confusing, but uh, you know when you look at the formula, this looks a little bit like I don't understand that, but when you play with the calculator, it just makes sense. So I'm hoping to really shed some light on this for you guys and encourage you guys to get started early with any kind of investing, really. Uh, it, it, time is on your side when you're young, and you're going to see going through these examples the huge difference between starting early and starting late in the game. So make sure you're one of those people that gets started early, even if it's a small amount. you got to start investing young to take advantage of the compound interest. You need time to be on your side. Okay, so first of all, let's define what it is. So compound interest is basically interest calculated on the principal as well as the accumulated interest of the previous periods of the deposit. Basically, that makes sense, but the best way to explain it is earning interest on your interest. So you earn interest on a certain investment, then the interest you earned earns interest. That's as simple as it is, guys. Maybe that formula looks confusing. It's interest on interest. The longer amount of time you invest, the more interest you earn, and the more interest you earn on that interest. Compound interest yields significantly more than simple interest, okay? What are some examples of compound interest? Well, let's say you're invested in a dividend stock, and then you reinvest those dividends. If people make the absolutely fatal mistake of not reinvesting those dividends, and they're getting dividend checks every, every quarter, I feel bad for those people because they miss out on a ton. They really do. So if you're somebody who's investing in stocks and you're getting those dividend checks in the mail, call up your broker, tell them you want to reinvest those things because you're missing out on so much money. You need to be reinvesting those dividends. It's, it's crucial to your financial success. So that's just one example there of compound interest and most uh, you know, mutual funds you're involved with, they're automatically set up to reinvest those dividends. That's how they should be. Make sure that you're doing this to take advantage of compound interest because if you're just getting those checks in the mail for dividends, you're not going to be taking advantage of compound interest because you're getting that interest basically paid to you as a cash payment instead of reinvesting it. But anyways, the formula, I'm not going to go into it because honestly, I'm just not going to. That's just going to confuse things. I'm not a math whiz, but if you want to know where the actual compound interest formula comes from, it's this guy right here. Um, so the first example we're going to look at is somebody who invests $10,000 principal at a 10% interest rate per year, and this is how much they earn over this number of years, okay? So after one year, they've earned 10% on 10000 or $1,000. So at that point, they have $11,000. After five years, they have a little over $16,000. Ten years down the road, they have just under $26,000. So obviously, when you first get started, it's nothing earth-shattering. It's decent returns, but it's nothing that's like jumps out at you crazy. You're kind of like, okay, yeah, you're earning a little bit more than you would if you were just making simple interest on that. But it's when you get years down the road where the exponential curve just takes place and you just your jaw drops. Okay, 15 years later, they are at 41,772, just under $42,000. 20 years later, they're at $67,000, uh, 67,275. After 25 years, you now have six figures. You're at just over $108,000 on your $10,000 investment after 25 years. 30 years later, you're at just shy of $175,000. There's a significant jump between 25 and 30 years right there, as you can see. So this is where things start to get interesting, guys, okay? After 35 years, you're just shy of $300,000. On your $10,000 investment, you're at $281,024.37. And, and after 45 years, guys, you have under just under $500,000. You have just under half a million dollars at that point from your $10,000 investment over 45 years. As you can see, time is what you need for compound interest. You need to give these things time. At first, the growth is slow. It's there, but it's slow. But when you look at 45 years down the road, it's astronomical, the difference between simple interest versus compound interest. Now, the next example is a little more realistic for you guys, because let's be honest, who has $10,000 
let's say you're let's say you want to invest for 45 years. You want to retire at set, at 65 years old. Who has 10 grand at 20 years old? That's not a very you know realistic situation. So this one should be more realistic for you guys. Let's say you had hundred dollars a month that you invested at the same 10% interest rate until you were 65 years of age. Now that's a little more realistic. hundred dollars a month is twelve hundred dollars a year. No matter what you're doing you should be able to come up with hundred dollars a month to invest. All right that's not an earth-shattering amount of money. That could just be as simple as investing your tax return. Most people get a little over a thousand dollars from their tax return. So let's say you agree to invest your tax return every single year earning 10% interest. And some people may argue that 10% interest is a little bit high, but if you think that's high, go in that compound interest calculator, change the figures around, and you're still gonna see these kind of crazy results. They may not be as high as far as the dollar amount, but the difference between the values based on time will be equally significant. So let's say you invested $100 a month starting at 20 years old. You got your first job, every single month you set aside 100 bucks and you invest it. If you start at 20, by the time you're 65 years old, you're gonna have $862,685.80, just under $900,000. You're almost a millionaire. If you start at 25, so if you wait five years to do this, okay, you're gonna have just over half a million dollars. So right there, the difference of waiting five years is a difference of over $300,000. Over $300,000 you miss out on by waiting five years. That's pretty crazy, guys. Now we look at starting at 30 years old, now you're looking at 325,229 and 24 cents. Still a lot of money, guys. But now we're talking about an, a difference of over half a million dollars. A difference of over $500,000 by waiting until you were 30, instead of starting when you were 20, investing just $100 every single month, or $1,200 each year. 35 years old, you get started investing. $100 a month until you're 65, you're gonna have just under $200,000. That's not, a, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, Looks like a lot of money, but if you're trying to retire, that's not a lot of money, guys. Uh, the, the figure that most people put on it is you're going to want like 20 times what you're earning as a salary in your retirement to be able to retire. Some people say 15, but people are living a lot longer now, so the more realistic figure is you're going to want 20 times your salary in order to retire and maintain the life that you have now and everything you're enjoying in life. Now we'll talk about 40 years old. So from 40 to 65, you invest $100 a month at 10% interest. You're going to have $118,000, basically. If you start at 45 years old, you're well under $100,000. You have $68,730 at that point. And if you're, if you're the poor soul that waits until they're 50 years old, then starts investing $100 a month for 15 years until they're 65, at 10% interest, they're going to have $38,126.98, maybe enough to buy a car, certainly nowhere is near enough to go retire off of. You gotta invest early. That's the difference of having a million dollar retirement versus a $40,000 retirement. The difference of 10 years is the difference of having a $300,000 retirement versus a basically $900,000 retirement. Go play with these numbers, guys. Jump on that compound interest calculator. Let's say you were ambitious and you invested 200 a month, 300, 500 a month. Let's say you were going crazy. Look at how much it changes those numbers. The last thing I want to take a look at, I want to ask you guys a question. I want you to answer this in the comments below. Three scenarios here. I want you to guess who has the most money, who has the middle amount of money, who has the least amount of money. So the person who invests $50 every single month, $600 a year, okay, from the age 20 to 65 years old, all right, then we have somebody who invests $500 a month from the age 45 to 65, and then we have somebody who invests $5,000 a month from the age of 60 to 65, and this is still earning that same 10% interest rate per year. So go ahead and answer in the comments, who do you think made the most money, or who has the most money in their retirement, who has the middle amount of money, who has the least amount of money? Okay, who has the most money? You probably guessed it based on this initial figure here. The person who invested $50 a month from age 20 to 65 has 431,342 and 90 cents. The person who invested 10 times that amount from age 45 to 65 has $343,650 or the least amount of money of the three. The person who invested 10 times that figure or $5,000 a month from 60 to 65 has $366,306. Now let me ask you this guys, what seems more realistic as far as what you could do every single month? Could you sacrifice 50 bucks a month from age 20 to 65? Pretty much everybody can. I don't know anybody who can't. All right, unless you're in really dire straits. Now, could you really invest $500 a month 
from 45 to 65? You probably could if you were financially well off and if you were good at balancing a budget. But could anybody realistically save $5,000 a month from 60 to 65? I say absolutely not. That's, that's a crazy number. But I just wanted to show you guys the difference of, of the time here. That You need time to be on your side. The last few pointers I want to make on compound interest are this. Think of compound interest as the time value of money. The more time you give it, the more it's going to build. You need time to be on your side. That's why you guys got to start young. It's, it's so important, okay? The growth with this is exponential. So if you go on that compound interest calculator, it shows you the graph. You're going to see that exponential curve where at first you're not seeing much of a difference, but after you give it a good number of years, that curve just takes off. And it's just crazy what compound interest can do for you. That's why Einstein calls it the eighth wonder of the world because it's just so amazing. Um, the last thing that I want to say is this. Compound interest can work for you or against you because you, if you have compound debt, all right, if you have debt that's earning debt, you're going to see the same figure but working against you. So if you're somebody who's paying off some kind of loan and you're basically at that point, you know, paying interest on that debt and then interest on that interest for your debt, it works the same way, but backwards. So just something else. I know that's probably kind of sounds kind of scary, but really consider when you're taking out loans that you may be basically paying interest on that interest on that loan. So it can work for you or against you. So make sure you're one of those people who has compound interest working for you. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much all I got for this video. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like. Um, if you guys have any other cool scenarios that you played around with on that compound interest calculator, drop them in the comments. If you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing to be notified of any future uploads. And as always, I thank you guys for watching this video.